Um, so today, hmm, interesting topic, huh? Has life made you better or bitter? Hey, Julia, welcome. Thanks for joining. It's a choice. Has life made you better or bitter? It's a choice. Welcome to everyone that's coming in. Um, 94 degrees today. Oh, I thought we got up to about 97. Anyway, it was it was on a hot side, but that's okay. You try to stay in the AC and you have your water. You be prepared, right? Uh, the weather will not make me bitter at all. I love Arizona. Um, one of the best choices uh, we've made, I've made. So before I continue, Father God, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, and I give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, and I thank you, Father God, that we do have a choice. We have a choice uh, about everything, uh, Lord God, and uh, pray, Father God, that we would make the right choices as we go through life, that we would seek you for direction and guidance for your plans for us or for good, for not for evil. You have amazing plans for us. Uh, so I thank you for every live viewer, everyone that will catch the replay. Uh, I thank you, Lord God, for uh, just giving me utterance. Holy Spirit, speak in through uh, to me, uh, to those that are watching, Lord God. And I will continue to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, Angie, thanks for uh, watching live. Um, I am a believer. I'm a Christian. Um, so everything that I share, I'm coming from the word of God. Or there's a principle, for the most part, um, even when I was celebrating my birthday, it's like, you know, celebrating a new life, thanking God. So there's always a scripture uh, that we can speak out of our mouths, right? Um, so today, I don't know if y'all can think where I'm going, what scripture will be our reference uh, for today's lesson, talking about being better or bitter. If you think about it, some of you may know. Um, but as we open up, before I get to the scripture that we're going to read, is one difference between bitter and better is I, right? There's an I in bitter. Uh, so in terms of when we think about life situations, um, we have a choice. We have a choice of, you know, how we're going to respond. Will we actually respond to our situation or will we react? Uh, the definition of better is of a more excellent or effective type or quality. Of a more excellent or effective type or quality. Bitter is angry, hurt, or resentful because of one's bad experiences or a sense of unjust treatment. So there's two uh, portions to that definition. We can be angry, hurt, or resentful because of a bad experience we had, or if we sense that we've been treated unjustly, unfairly, right? And then we become bitter. Situations may be beyond our control. However, how we respond to those situations is our choice, right? So think about that. Um, I, I truly uh, do not dismiss situations that uh, we have gone through. Uh, some may have been horrific, um, again, on just whatever it is. However, we can bring uh, sickness, we can bring unforgiveness, we can bring so many issues and challenges on ourselves, on our bodies, and they can manifest in different ways uh, if we're bitter because this bitterness, this unforgiveness, there's so many different things that are rolled up into one, right? That can manifest in our body in illnesses and sicknesses. Um, so again, it's not to... Um, take lightly if you were in an abusive situation and, you know, God forbid, we'll uh, pray for that. However, it's how we respond. And once we choose Christ, right, he can help us to grow through whatever it is that we have gone through. I'm going to read the scripture, uh, just portion of the scripture, and we're coming from Ruth. Those of you who know the story of Ruth and Naomi uh, know that Naomi actually called herself. She changed her name. <laughs> she changed her name to Bitter, right? So um, I'm reading Ruth 1, uh, just a few verses within that chapter so that we can get the context and we can bring the point home. 
In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. There was a famine where they lived, where Naomi's family lived. And a certain man of Bethlehem of Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab. He, his wife, and his two sons. The man's name was Elimelech, and his wife's name was Naomi, and his two sons were named Malon and Chilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem of Judah. They went to the country of Moab and continued there. Now, Moab and the Israelites shouldn't really have had dealings, right? But sometimes we uh, get off course. Sometimes we step out the uh, Father's plan. Um, and we may put ourselves in challenging situations. But Elimelech, who Naomi's son, uh, who's, who Naomi's husband died, and she was left with her two sons. And they took wives of the women of Moab. Well, they're there. Daddy's gone. You know, um, you know what are we going to do? We can't ask him, get us permission, whatever. We're going to just, you know, marry uh, Moabite women. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other was Ruth. Um, hello to you. Uh, they dwelt there about 10 years and Malon and Chilion died also, both of them. So the women was, um, they had lost their, they lost the two sons and her husband. Um, Naomi lost all the men in her life. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law to return to the country of Moab. Re I'm sorry to return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in Moab how the Lord had visited his people in giving them food, right? That's key. So the rest of the chapter talks about them, you know, going back and she's like, wait a minute. Hey, y'all are still young. This is your hometown. You stay here. No, we're going to go with you. No, 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 no. You, you know, you stay here. This is what you're familiar with. Oprah was like, okay, cool. <laughs> I'm good. Um, I'm, I'm going to be here. Love you. Um, it's been nice knowing you. And she stayed. Ruth declared and made a pledge that urge me not to leave you or to turn back from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Now, of course, uh, you know, she's from Moab. But she saw something in Naomi, even though Naomi, Naomi couldn't see it in herself. That was like, there's something special about the God that she serves, that the God that she's familiar with, right? She says, where you die, I will die. And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me and more. Also, if anything but death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she said no more. So they both went on until they came to Bethlehem. And when they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town, town was stirred about them and said, is that Naomi? And she said to them, call me not Naomi. Naomi means pleasant. Call me Mara, which means bitter. For the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full. So when she left Bethlehem, she had a husband, she had two sons. But the Lord has brought me home again empty. Why call me Naomi since the Lord has testified against me and the Almighty has afflicted me? And of course, you know, those of you who may be a believer or may be familiar with the story knows the end of it, um, you know, in, in terms of how it turns out in the book. But I just wanted to lift these few verses, you know, for this so that we can see how it is a choice um, for whatever reason um, about the death that Naomi had. And this is something real. All of us experience death, uh, whether if it's a spouse, parent, children, right? Um, some more often than others, but death is real. And in this particular case, Naomi became bitter. She became bitter instead of becoming better about the situation. How can we become better? Again, not making light of what we go through, but when we look to the Lord, when we uh, trust God, when we receive all that he has for us. Um, so often when somebody lost a, loses a loved one and we pray you know, for healing, we pray uh, for comfort, it's a choice to receive that healing, right? Because, and that's how I pray, Lord, may they receive the comfort that only you can give. God understands what each and every one of us go through 
if it's not the loss of a loved one, it may be a broken uh, relationship. It may be physical uh, sickness in a body. It may be financial hardship. Whatever it is, whatever difficult situation we may go be going through, God is so faithful and he will see us through. It may take longer than we think, <laughs> right? But he can give us the strength. And that's why we go to the word. We look to the word for encouragement because his word, the scripture, the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament is life to us, right? When we feed on the word, so often we pull out scriptures that can encourage us. And that's what I'm saying. That will make the difference in how we approach life situation and circumstances, right? Um, in terms of sicknesses. Uh, by Jesus stripes, I'm healed because uh, Jesus shed his blood, broke his, uh, had his body broken for our sins, for our salvation. So we, um, once we accept Jesus, are entitled to healing, right? When we uh, receive that salvation, we're entitled to that healing. So it's how are we going to look at situations? You may get a diagnosis um, that is terminal. It doesn't have to be the end, right? We trust God. We believe God. We stand on his word. And we... Uh, celebrate that whatever his plans for us, they are perfect, right? Um, that he is sovereign in the midst, right? So we want to trust him and that will help us with our outlook. So in terms of Naomi, um, and of course she, uh, you know, had her family line uh, to continue because she got a kinsman redeemer in the person of Boaz and going back home, um, so she lost so many years of her life um, after 10 years of being in Moab. That's when they died. And she lost so many years of living life. So my encouragement to you and to us is to trust God. And again, when I say that I come with these messages because they have um, hit me first uh, this morning, actually, because I had a different title for today. Uh, this morning, one devotion that I was reading, uh, you know, brought this up talking about bitterness or talking about grace, and we can choose how to respond. Um, I was corrected. I was corrected in how I look at situations. Again, um, thoughts, feelings, emotions may be valid, based on what has taken place, but it's my response. It's how I address certain things. It's how I say certain things because we may be critical, um, you know, of situations, of circumstances, of people, and it can turn to bitterness. Then we'll manifest in different things, right? In different ways. So I'm, I'm putting myself out there, y'all. Uh, you know, when I, I bring this title, it's like, you know what? God, I thank you. And I thank, I thank the Lord. I say, God, I thank you for correction. Um, because we can, again, be justified um, in the way we feel, but it's not healthy. It's not Christ-like. It's not Christian. So we want to allow God to heal our hearts, uh, to make situations better. Um, and it's a blessing because God is so merciful. So in the story with Ruth and Naomi, uh, first Naomi, uh, but Ruth, of course, is the starring character in this particular case. God um, allowed her uh, to live again, to hope again, to dream again. Um, so God may allow certain things or he may order certain things so that he can get the glory out of our lives. And we just have to trust whatever it is that he is doing, whatever he's allowing, he um, you know, is faithful. Throughout this process, one example, one praise report uh, moving to Arizona in August of 2017 and um, desiring to start my business, started the business, not having clients, putting in applications here and there, different places, um, you know, with nothing manifesting, but still believing God, still trusting God, uh, becoming a better, better steward over the finances. It's like, okay, all right, nothing has manifested yet. So let's make some adjustments. Let's make some shifts. However, still trusting God in the meantime, right? Still confessing his promises for our lives, right? And believing that it will manifest. Our pastor has been preaching um, any day now. So it's an ex expectation. It's believing that God is faithful and trusting him even when we don't see the answer, even when we don't see the way. So my encouragement is, for us to let our situations, let life make us better. It's not too late. Whatever it is that you are going through, God sees, right? Well, why does he allow it? 
I don't know. That's an answer for him. He may or may not answer that particular question to you, but go to God, seek God. However, in the meantime, ask him to help you. Ask him to help you have a better attitude about what the situation is, uh, regardless of the time or length. Lord God, help me to see you in this. Help me to change my attitude, change my actions to be better. Um, yes, definitely stay, stay in expectation because God is faithful and we can trust him. So in terms of the better and bitter, and as I said, bitterness can manifest in so many different ailments um, and challenges in our body, especially. Uh, so if it is that you're experiencing something, um, ask God, you know, is there an area that I need to release? Is there someone I need to release that I need to forgive? I'm not saying the necessary tied together. I don't know. However, I, I, I know that there are uh, uh, areas uh, that impacts that. Your attitude determines your altitude. Absolutely, right? The attitude that we have about that. And the Lord will check us. Like I said, he corrected me today. He checked me today. So I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to share. <laughs> I've been corrected. I'm going to share it with them. No, we are not going to be on 100 every day, all the time. I'm not even trying to be like, okay, really? We're going to have our moments. However, we don't want to stay in those moments. And we definitely don't want to be angry, right? We don't want to be resentful um, of other people and other situations, right? We want to trust God. We want to look up. We want to praise him. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So we want to praise him. And we have a choice. So whatever it is that you're going through, if you're going through a challenge right now where you may have some bitterness, right? It's a choice. So if it's a choice, you can choose to be unbitter. I just made that word up, I think, right? But you can choose to see the situation differently. It's like, God, I trust you. You are all powerful. You are all knowing. You've already completed my life. So help me to submit to you. Help me to trust you. Help me to uh, give you all my cares, my concerns, because cares can turn into snares if we hold on to them. And, um, and of course, we know, you know, snares that they use uh, trap the animals and it holds them and they can't move forward. So if you're in a position of bitterness right now, any kind of level, you're probably stuck and you're not moving forward, right? So we want to move forward and we want to move forward in excellence and productive. So we want to trust God. So as I close, right? Because I'm looking at 620. Father God, I lift up to everyone. I lift up everyone that's watching right now. I plead and apply the blood of Jesus over their minds, their hearts, and their emotions. And I pray, Father God, that you would saturate and surround them with your presence, that they will feel a tangible presence. Those that have a relationship with you, I pray for healing to manifest. I pray that they will surrender their will to your will. Yes, they may be right, but that they will surrender their will, that they will surrender the people, the situations that have hurt them to you so that you can bring healing, so that you can bring restoration. Those who don't know you, um, have never accepted you as Savior and Lord, I pray for their salvation to manifest this day. I pray, Lord God, that somebody will cross their path, that something that will be said that will turn the light on, that they will know that there is hope in you, that their situation their circumstance can be better, can be different because it can with you because you are that good father, you're that good God, that you're that loving, caring, compassionate, forgiving God. So as we can receive your forgiveness by confessing our sins, we need to forgive others so that we can receive that forgiveness. So touch, minister to everyone right now, Lord God. And as I pray, I believe that transformation, that change has taken place, is taking place as we surrender, for you are faithful. So previous broadcasts, come up with your hands up. Let's surrender to God. Let's trust him with our lives. God, you are faithful. Lord, I give you the praise, the honor, and glory as we go uh, throughout this week. May we look for you in you in different ways. May we trust you uh, uh, with everything that uh, concerns us, Father God, and see the victory. So 
touch each and every one that's on this live. Touch those that will pop in and, and watch the replay, Lord God. You are truly faithful. So I pray, Lord God, that we would choose to be better, that we would choose uh, the, the smile, that we would choose life, that we would speak life and see it manifest because death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So thank you, Father God. Uh, use us for your glory. Use us to encourage our neighbor, our family, our friends, those that we come in contact with, Lord God. I pray uh, multiple blessings and increase over those watching, Father God. You are faithful, Lord God. I love you. I bless you and praise you. In Jesus' name I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. So it's a choice, y'all. I know you may have been hurt. I know you may have been offended, but it's a choice. So choose better and not bitter, right? And see your life change. See healing take place. See uh, provision increase come. See favor come just by one, that decision. So thank you all for your prayers. Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. Uh, yes, better is much greater than bitter. And we are going to see our lives turn around. Whatever fragment, whatever portion, that we need to release, that we need to change, we're going to see that change, right? And as we pray for the others, we're going to see victory. I believe it. I dare to believe it. I dare to believe God because he is faithful. So I love you all. I appreciate you all. Until the next time, Monday may be slightly different because I travel to California tomorrow uh, for a work opportunity event. Uh, so I will be there, but, God, but I'm going to make it happen. So we may be in a different scenery, but uh, you'll be in California with me instead of Arizona. Um, but we will come forth. We will come forth with encouragement and inspiration um, as I have been charged and challenged to do. Um, and I count it a pleasure. So I appreciate you all. Thank you for hanging in there. I appreciate your time. Time is precious. Time is life. L-I-F-E. So thank you for sharing this portion of your life with me. God bless you. I'm praying for you. Until the next time. Thank you for your prayers. Love you all. God bless you. Bye-bye. Before I sign off, I wasn't supposed to turn the camera around, but that's all right. We're going to take care of that wonderful pile of paper. <laughs> God bless you all.